<laughs> Go ahead, Zach. What's the difference in maybe where you were defensively in the first half when it, it felt like they were just kind of getting the rhythm well and where you are closing the second half where I think they go more than five minutes without a point? Well, defensively, they didn't really run off. I mean, they had 37 points. They had 21 points at the 10-minute mark of the first half. And I'm sitting in the timeout, and I'm saying, guys, if we keep at this pace, they're going to double that and, and score 40-some points. Which they was at 37. We missed two point blank layups that could have tied it going into half. I was I felt good from a defensive standpoint. Um, in the second half, it's the same way. I mean, we just coming down the stretch run, man. We became so stingy on the defensive end that we refused to to give up good looks, and they struggled. And you know, we didn't do much better, but we got the cushion that we needed from an offensive standpoint to secure it. This isn't the first time that Trace has played the whole game or played a lot of minutes like that. What were you saying to him throughout the game, and how's he able to get through games like this? Hey, listen, I went through a back surgery and came back eight games, and I played 40 minutes a game, each game. He's a young kid, 40 minutes. He can rest tomorrow. He was fantastic today on both ends of the floor, happened to battle a great player in Dickerson and, and still be able to do what he did just speaks volumes. He's playing unbelievable. Your thoughts on the offensive comp contributions you got from Trace and from, from Fino tonight? I mean, they the only ones that was really clicking, so we kept them in a lot of pick and rolls. And, you know, Fino was finding his gaps, and Trace had some rolls that he was able to finish uh, along with some of his post up stuff around the rim. But, you know, it was the seven guys I played. I shortened the rotation tonight. I just didn't feel comfortable in putting the, the pressure on, you know, like, CJ or, or uh, Caleb, so you know we were shorthanded, and I just I rolled the seven guys, and, and they came through. Mike Jalen uh, had a little turnover struggles early, but really played well in the second half. Made a lot of good decisions. It seemed like for a freshman like that to kind of bounce back through that. How did you feel about that? Well, again, I, you know he did have six turnovers, and these are things he's young. You know, I mean, from watching film, he'll learn not to take chances. You know, not to be lazy entry passes to the post and, and not be lackadaisical with the ball out front when he's handling it. So, I mean, all those things with maturity, you know, he'll get better. But, you know, he played a solid game. I mean, we need every bit of his 21 points. Mike, uh, when did when did race become unavailable? When did you decide that? Well, he, he told me on the way over on the bus, you know, the shoot around, he tried to do some things, but he was worse coming back. Uh, on the bus to come over for the game and told me he just couldn't go. So, hey, what are you going to do? It's next man up. <laughs> you got to get ready to go. Do you think that influenced your defense early in the first half? No, again, I don't think our defense, you know, the first 10 minutes, yeah, we gave up a lot of points. But from that 10-minute mark on, you gave up 16 points, man. You know what I mean? So, to me, that's defending from, from the 10, 9, 10-minute 10 mark of the first half all the way through the rest of the game. Our defense was solid. You add 24 on the 16, they scored 40 points. How, how much can it help a team when they, like you said, didn't really play well necessarily for some stretches, but you still won a Big Ten road game? Guys, look, it's hard on the road. You know, I told those guys in the locker, this is probably the biggest game since I've been here as a coach that we won. Because you come out on the road and have to play a team like Michigan that's good here at home, and you get a win. So it's huge. Speaks volume for our ball club. Mike, you continue to close out games, which is something that didn't happen last year, and you got that done. With well, them. I'm, I'm still learning as a coach, man. Hey, listen, you know we had a lot of games last year that I had us close, and we were in, had leads, and, and I couldn't get them over the hump, man. And you know they starting to feel a little bit good about their coach, and they playing for me, so that means a great deal. And, so maybe we can continue to win games like this. You've asked a lot about Trey's evolution offensively, but it felt like he was at the scene of some really important defensive plays last five, seven minutes. No, he was. Like, he was, you know, I mean, you, he, we, we get blocked, and then he comes back, and he makes a big block. That was huge. That was probably the biggest play of the game. He got us an opportunity to come back and, and take the lead. So, I mean, it's, it was a battle, man. They didn't want to bend, but... You know, we were the better team coming down the stretch. Some people are talking about Trace Jackson Davis as National Player of the Year candidate. What do you think? Hey, hey, listen, I'm glad he's on our team because he's done everything you could possibly do playing that position this year.
for our team. I mean, it's, he's been fantastic. We're going to keep riding him and see where it leads us. Okay, I've got players ready, so I'm going to let Coach go. Thank you guys. <laughs>